Okay, so we've heard. Uh, thank you very much, um, Ege, for the, your presentation. We're moving on to something else. We heard, on, we heard earlier on this morning what can be done now in terms of decarbonisation. Well, one thing that can be done right now is the next uh, session, carbon trading and carbon credits. Um, our moderator is Faraz Mir, who's head, or, head of energy transition and trading at Standard Chartered. Um, we also have Aditya, Tri is it, is it? Yes. Aditya Trivedi, uh, senior uh, analyst at Marsoft. We have Emma Mazari, Senior Director, Head of Finance Decarbonization at Maersk. James Blunt, Head of New Markets, Shipping and Aviation at Redshaw Advisors. James Voyle, Carbon Solutions, Affinity Shipping, LLP. Uh, we're going to start this uh, with a few slides uh, from uh, Faraz, who will show the slides uh, and continue uh, with, as moderator. Uh, between that, we'll also have a few slides from Aditya and Marsoft. Uh, Faraz, please. Thank you, Kevin. Um, as Kevin said, I'm head of energy transition trading at Standard Chartered Bank. Uh, we cover the LNG markets and carbon markets. Um, for this talk, obviously, we're focusing on carbon markets, and I just wanted to give a brief introduction to the current carbon market situation. Okay, found it. Um, yeah. So, currently there are two main carbon markets, a compliance market and a voluntary market. The compliance market is a mandatory market where um, regulatory bodies will issue allowances for the amount of carbon they would allow to be output during the year. They're normally done in calendar years. Um, and carbon emitters will need to either secure these allowances and submit them uh, the following year. There are four or five main carbon markets currently. The two most established is the EU ETS. It's been going for over 15 years. Um, the, the most liquid market, it was the largest mandatory market, but it's definitely the most liquid market um, in the world. We also have the California market covering the California um, area. And then now we have the Chinese market. That will be the largest market in the world. But um, for now, it's just in its infancy and beginning to grow. You also as well have the UK market, which is an offshoot because of Brexit. The UK originally was part of the um, EU ETS, but since Brexit has created its own carbon market, they're mirrored very closely together. Um, and you have other markets across the globe, such as Australia, uh, South Korea. Um, we expect the carbon markets on the mantra side to continue to grow, but currently they're only covering around 10% of output. Um, so what we've seen over the I would say past few years, but in fact, voluntary carbon has been around for many, many years. Um, but generally, over the last few years, we're seeing a lot more focus on them, especially with net zero targets. Voluntary carbon markets are slightly different. So these are not mandatory. Um, there's no official scheme about them. They are basically project developers who are creating projects, whether that be forestry or nature-based or technology-based, which are either avoiding or removing credits. Um, these credits are then available to companies who are polluting and are unable to reduce their, their carbon output immediately. So the idea is to help transition away from carbon by supporting projects that are currently removing carbon. Um, we're getting more, as I said, more and more interest is coming into this market over the past few years, and we're seeing that market expand quite rapidly. Um, we ourselves have been focused on it at Standard Charter uh, through the TV um, CM, which was the, the scalability of voluntary carbon markets, a task force that was created by Mark Carney and chaired by Bill Winters. We're also now heavily involved in the ICVCM, which is the Integrity Council. Again, I'll talk about that a bit later because that's got quite an important role because its, it's idea is to really give some credibility, give some principles behind what is a good carbon credit and what you should be able to use to offset your carbon output. Um, now I'll just talk a bit about the the EU ETS, uh, I think that's been covered a little bit here uh, today due to the Fit for 55 package. Um, as I said, it's the most liquid carbon market in the world. It, it covers various industries, and that's looking to go with as part of the Fit for 55 package. And, and as you've probably heard or know, shipping is now going to be involved in that. To what extent, we'll discuss maybe a little bit later on. Um, but it, it's an important market. It's a growing market. 
And again, these, these compli mandatory compliance markets are very interesting because what they will do is that they are reducing supply year by year. That's how they work. So they will say year one, there's X amount of output, but by year two, we reduce that and it continues to reduce. So you're reducing supply of allowances while at the same time increasing demand by increasing the amount of industries and companies that are going to be exposed to that market. And we're currently seeing that big change um, happening over the last year or two with this fit, fit for 55 package, which as I said, it includes shipping plus other sectors, um, and definitely we see that demand growing. So the way they encourage the market to start decarbonizing is to increase the price, reduce the supply, so demand has to change. Um, but again, we'll, we'll discuss that in the panel uh, a bit later on. Um, this is just an example, uh, well, not an example, this is how the market has reacted over the past uh, few years due to the various implements um, and amendments the EU has made to the carbon market. Overall, though, you can see that there is just this lack of supply, increased demand, so price has been going up rapidly, and it's, it's happening very rapidly. So because these are fungible, so these allowances that they release year by year, you are allowed to use for future year's output. The current year um, phase is phase four. It means you can purchase allowances now up for use until 2030. Why that's important is because as industries know they're being impacted by this, they can come in and they can purchase those allowances and hold them for future, future output. And, and with this feeling of increased prices, you see the reaction of the market air. So it's a very important uh, topic to, to understand and see how you can manage your, your future exposure and the market allows you to do that. Then we've got the voluntary carbon, as I said. So this is the source, and it's a bit different. You know, it's, it's still a bit complex. You have nature-based solutions, you have technology-based solutions, you have avoidance, you have removals. There's many different types of projects out there. So what we're looking to do is, is make some sort of, um, as I said, core principles around that. That will allow the market to have more integrity. It allows companies and buyers to understand what they're purchasing, why that's important, and how they can use that to offset their current output. The idea of the voluntary carbon market is to support projects that are removing carbon, but it's a transitional product. It's not there forever. These are really there to allow you to now start showing a net zero presence, but in the future, we're looking for decarbonization. Again, we'll talk about that a bit later in the panel. But that was just a brief overview of where the carbon markets are. Um, we're gonna discuss that a lot further in the panel, but um, if you do want more information, please reach out to your standard chartered representatives and, and we're happy to give a much more in-depth presentation as to how those markets are developing and, and how we can assist you in, um, in what's happening. Just one final point on the, um, uh, that's more about the credits, uh, who issues them but, um, and the price movement. As you can see, again, we've had some big rises over the years. This is a bit more unstable though um, because of that lack of understanding of exactly what's needed and, and who needs to buy it. So, but we do expect these to move as with um, EUAs, where as companies come in to purchase these, to retire them against their, um, against their output, we'll see a diminished supply. Um, yeah, I just want to talk about the, the IC VCM. The only thing that's interesting here is they're currently doing a public uh, consultation about what people would want to see from these core carbon principles, and I'd advise you to get in touch um, with representatives on the ICBCM, especially for the shipping industry, just to understand what you're looking for, what the market's thinking about, and how you can use the, um, the, the voluntary carbon market to, uh, to move towards decarbonization. And that's all from me, and I'll pass over to Edita. <laughs>